second harmonic or what we might call the um, first overtone so an overtone sounds like you're playing something over the top of something else and it's a little bit like that, just a little bit like that it's enough to kind of give us a, a way to remember it so first overtone for string um, you have to have a note at either end um, and there has to be an anti-node in the middle somewhere but you can't have it in the same configuration as before and your sequence has to go node, anti-node, node, anti-node, anti node, anti-node and so forth so we're going to actually have to have a node in the middle an anti-node here, anti-node here and it's going to come up, go down, come up and this is just showing half so that's showing the full movement of the standing wave with another fixed position in the middle okay so how would you produce this? you would have to drive it um, with more energy, faster than, um, yeah, more energy. We'll just leave it at that. You can get into a lot of detail, um, but it's not quite where we want to go at this point. So you can see in this case, with the length, actually equals the wavelength. Okay, let's look at our uh, closed pipe. Okay, we've still got our node at the end. We have to have a node. And remember, they, we have to have an anti-node at the end. Um, but because we're, we'll, in this case, we'll be blowing harder across the top, so you can get this effect if you blow on an empty glass bottle lightly, and then you blow on it harder, you'll get a change in pitch. Or if you get a piece of uh, garden hose about a, a metre or two long and swing it around, maybe a metre, and then swing it faster so the air going across the top of the hose uh, moves faster, you'll end up with uh, a, new, a new pitch being produced. But we have to have an anti-node and a node. So we're going to have... Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and once again, not drawn that great, but you can see where these nodes and anti nodes are being produced. Okay, um, so in this case, this is a little bit of an awkward one. We've got the length here, but we've got three quarters of the wavelength equaling the length. So if we we're going to write this to give a formula for the wavelength, the wavelength is going to be equal to um, 4L over 3. That's just rearranging the above equation. I'm just really quickly showing you. So the particles here don't move, then they move more and more, and they're moving a maximum here, and then they move less and less, and then they're not moving right in the middle, and then they move more and more until they're moving a maximum here. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, actually, I've done something a little bit um, incorrect, um, because this... Um, this is not a. Um, this is not the first overtone. This is actually the second overtone. Um, because, <coughs> or the third harmonic. Okay, it's the next frequency up that you can get within this tube, um, but with with the. Uh, or higher frequency, I should say, yeah, because you're getting shorter wavelength. Let's look at this. V equals f lambda. Um, the velocity of sound is presumably not changing unless you're heating up the instrument, but we're not. We're keeping it the same. The wavelength is decreasing as you squeeze more of the wave into the tube, so that means the frequency must be increasing. So audibly, you would hear it increasing in pitch, um, and that would be true because uh, for a guitar, if you start off with the wide finger spacing and you've got your first um, harmonic or the fundamental then you put your finger somewhere halfway in between you're going to have to have a higher note and you'll be able to easily visualize that or remember that um, with the shorter wavelength and the higher frequency anyway so this one over here that this is the second harmonic um, and the first overtone this is actually the third harmonic how do we know is because we have um, the way the harmonics and the overtones work, for a second harmonic it has to be, um, and I'll write this in red because it's really important, has to be half the wavelength or twice the frequency. Same thing. Half the wavelength and twice the frequency is the same thing. Um, but that's how you define it. So this one being the third harmonic, um, we've got, um, if, we, if we go up, we've got 2L is equal to the wavelength, um, but now we've got 4L divided by 3. 
Okay, if we look at it, oh no, I've, I've looked at the wrong point again. Let's come over here. We're dealing with a closed pipe. Okay, closed pipe, and I think I'm losing the ability to keep this short enough, but we'll try. Um, we've gone from, um, with that length there, being um, 4L for the wavelength, being one quarter of the wavelength in the pipe, down to, um, back over here, um, the length being three quarters of the wavelength. So it's three times the amount. You can make a cut here and here, and you've got one, two, three times the length, which is why it's the third harmonic and overtone. Okay, really quickly, the last one um, for a uh, open pipe, um, and we've got an antinode, an antinode, and a node was our original, but now we're going to have to go. We've still got to have an antinode at, at either end. Um, but we can we can go we can actually chuck a node in the middle uh, sorry an anti node in the middle and have two nodes on either side so there's a node there's a node anti node node anti node very hard to draw and keep your mind on it while you're doing what there we go so if you remember our first one had just this but now we've got twice the wavelength uh, twice the amount of waves in there which means half the wavelength again. So our um, wavelength is actually equal to um, the length in this case. Is that right? Yes, because we return back to the start. Um, that makes sense. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so that's the um, that's a second harmonic. Very quickly, I'll show you the um, third harmonic for the string and for the um, open pipe. Third harmonic. So for the string, we're going to end up with. Um, we definitely have to have those nodes in the middle. We're just going to end up one, two, three. So now we've got uh, for our length, we've got uh, one and one half wavelengths in the length. Okay, sorry, I had an interruption. And pause. Um, so we've got three times what we had originally in there. Okay, for the guitar string, and then you're going to see the same thing again with the open pipe. We already dealt with the closed pipe. Have to have an anti node on either end still, um, but this time we're going to have half, and <laughs> this is very tricky to draw. Full there, there. Let's see if this works. There we go. Whew. <laughs> tricky, tricky. Did that work? I think that worked. Yes. So in this case, we've got um, the length gives us, uh, we can break it up into sections here, we've got one wavelength there and a half wavelength there, so in total we've got uh, three wavelengths over two, is it right? Three, one and a half? Yes, uh, three wavelengths over two, and you could spin that around and go that the wavelength equals uh, two L over three. But anyway, you can see the pattern how it draw, uh, develops, um, and you can keep working these out yourself.